<laughs> Man, it seems like just yesterday I was here at, well, a similar cafe in Williamsburg, Virginia, talking about the very first Wi-Fi pineapple. I guess in that case, though, it's actually inside a real piece of fruit. Um, and then on to, you know, the, the, the original, the, the Yazaga, you know, the, the karma on the fawn. Uh, and then later, uh, like in a plastic pineapple and the open mesh versions, the Mark II, and very excited now about the Mark III because this hardware is is a step better and the software, I just have had so much fun with it. So I figured that, you know, I'd come back here to the, uh, you know, the usual suspects, uh, the target rich environment, if you will, and uh, kind of do a demo of, you know, what it all is and what's new in it, kind of give you uh, a little look at what's under the hood and then talk about, you know, upcoming projects. Um, but you know, the more I think about it, the more I'm realizing I've done this before. How many times have we been at the cafe? We should probably just go get a beer. Does that sound good to you, Paul? Yeah, all right, let's, let's just, let's pack it up and go do that. That sounds like more fun. Hey, Jason. Hey, Darren. How are you? I'm all right. Excellent. Thinking a boot of Oktoberfest would do the trick. A boot? A boot. So if you guys are new to the show or new to Yazaga in general, basically, let me give you a brief overview. I know I've talked about it a lot in the past, but we do have some fun new stuff in the Mark III. So you know, let me just kind of like lay the groundwork. Essentially, what Yazaga is is a modified wireless access point or wireless router that um, that does something pretty unique. It implements Karma, and the way that that works is that uh, it replies to probe requests and lets them see what they want to see. So if you're familiar with like Harry Potter, it's like the uh, in the first movie how there was that mirror, and whatever Harry looked at in the mirror, he saw what he wanted to see. This is that in wireless access point form. Um, and essentially, what will happen is when we turn on the Karma in Yazaga, it's going to be the yes man or the yes sayer. Actually, it's kind of apt that we're in a German bar because, you know, it is German for the yes man. In that, when your smartphone, when your tablet, when your laptop turns on, most of the, case, most of the time with most uh, operating systems, what's been implemented is a feature for convenience. And as we know, convenience always trumps security, uh, where the device in question will automatically send out what are called probe requests saying, hey, is my home network around? Is my work network around? Any wireless access point that you've connected to that's open and remembered, it will try to automatically connect to. And this is the default state for so many devices. I can't tell you how many times in testing I've had Blackberries and iPhones and laptops and tablets and just you name it, devices connect to what they think is the free Wi-Fi at the airport, at the coffee shop, um, a lot of times like in-flight Wi-Fi. And it works very well on open networks and that's kind of key because open networks are the public ones. I mean, obviously you couldn't have a wireless network at the airport and be like, oh, you know, we're providing free Wi-Fi for the patrons at the airport. Here's the WPA key. It would, that wouldn't work. You know, what you typically find is it's an open access point and then there'll be like a, um, you know, like a little splash page where like, here's our terms of service, agree to these and, and whatnot. So that is the Yazaga bit in a nutshell. And we're really stoked because it is such a powerful, just such a very, on a fundamental level, such a very powerful thing to just say yes, because it violates that inherent trust that the computer has, that, that the access point is who it says it is. And it's kind of crazy to think that, oh, the computer's just gonna trust this access point because it said it was. You know, there are so many aspects to what an access point is, more than just the SSID. But this just sees, hey, here's a request for this SSID. Yeah, sure, that's it. And I know that it gets really complex in like enterprise networks and whatnot to like kind of manage like, you know, all of the other aspects. But dude, seriously, there's way more to identify an access point than just that. There's the BSSID, there's the channels, there's all of these different elements that go into it. And yet none of those are parsed for security and for users' convenience and user friendliness, 
we just remember those and automatically connect, so you don't have to type the password every time you boot up. What a pain in the ass that would be. So anyway, that's what we're doing. We're violating the inherent trust that uh, that, that has in, in just the Wi-Fi setup. And um, using this, we can become the man in the middle, and that's where all the fun stuff comes in, and that's where the Mark III really shines. Now, first and foremost, I have to give a big cheers and thanks to Robin Wood, of course, for all of his wonderful work with Yazaga, which this implements, uh, as well as Sebastian and Mubix for all their support in the development of the Mark III. Um, and I'm really excited because basically, we've taken a look at like the way that the first two versions worked and some of the hangups that, that, that the biggest issues that people were having with it and the biggest like features that people wanted with it and and I think the biggest difference was that the first one was kind of considered like an access point running Yazaga and this one now is kind of more considered like a router running Yazaga and what I mean by that is before it was all like passing through and you would have your DHCP server and all of your tools on the laptop that you're hosting your uh, pineapple with which is you know great but if say you want to you know batter power leave it somewhere and do all your evil bidding that way, it wasn't as easy. And there were configurations to do it that way, but it just wasn't easy. And that's really what I've gone through here is trying to do, rewriting the web interface and just making everything simple. So what we've done is the DHCP server now lives on the device itself. And so the clients, they connect, they get an IP address from the pineapple and you don't need to think about how that interfaces with your laptop anymore. Um, and the tools, or not all of the tools, but some of our favorite man in the middle tools, the DSNF suite, uh, NGREP, the AirCrackNG suite, things of that nature, have then moved over to the pineapple so that you can do that stuff. And then to make it really easy, I've rewritten the web interface so that all of those services, just like before with the Ajaxy web interface, same idea. Uh, I've kind of gone in a different direction. I've, to be honest, what I've done here is I've got inspired by your standard Soho routers, uh, as well as my old bulletin board system days, and come up with a uh, a interface that's. I'm, I'm pretty proud of. Uh, the idea here is across the top you've got your you know, status, configuration, advanced, and about pages. And within those you can change configuration files and set up different properties of it. And turning on and off services like the URL snarfer, the DNS spoofer, and network grepping and things of that nature are really just kind of a click away. And on the status page you just get a dynamically updating list of, you know, connected clients and, and what access points they think they're connected to and the DHCP log and the URL snarfer and down here our network wrapper and our phishing log. So it was really just a concept of trying to make everything easier, moving the tools onto the device and now it's super simple to basically uh, get started. Like for example, uh, internet connection sharing is I just run in Linux a, a script where I answer a couple of questions like what's my, you know, uh, the network and uh, you know, we've set it up on a 172.16.42.x and then it'll ask you like what's the interface between you and your pineapple, in my case ETH2, and what's your interface to the internet and since I'm using a 3G dongled PPP0 and then I just kind of like hit answers for the rest of the questions and it automatically sets up IP forwarding and IP tables and all of those things so that the internet just kind of passes through. And on Windows, it's just a few clicks as well, just saying, here's my internet connection and here's my pineapple connection, just kind of make the stuff work. Um, so that's really exciting. That's really kind of the fundamental change there. So I figure, you know, uh, why don't we do a little demo since the coffee shop is just next door. Right. This is so much better than sitting at the cafe having a coffee. Of course, now I'm a little out of range, but that's why I don't go anywhere without one of these guys. Um, and of course, now I've, I've modded this just a bit, so uh, with a little bit of a sniper scope, I can actually kind of just dial it in just right. Gotta love that RPSMA connector. Um, so anyway, I'm here in the new pineapple interface, and I, I guess I'll show you, like, you know, so we've talked about some of the tools. Maybe I'll just give a quick demo of like some clients connecting and whatnot. Uh, what we see over here on the right are our um, our DHCP logs. So I can see I've had a BlackBerry, my iPad, uh, this iPhone, another BlackBerry, and an Android. In fact, I know this Android this MAC address to be uh, my cell phone. So if I actually check my cell phone here, and uh, yeah, you can see this is if I go over to my Wi-Fi settings. 
actually says, this is a fake. There's no access point around called this is a fake, but since it's a sent out a probe requires saying, hey, is this is a fake around, uh, the pineapple's seen that. And then if I come down here to my association log, I see, there we go, this is a fake, along with the rest of the people that think they're connected to T-Mobile and JBuggy, ATT Wi-Fi, SES, uh, GoGo InFlight. That's a fun one. In fact, that's this iPad here. If I take a look at the uh, internet connection settings here, you see it says GoGo InFlight, and it automatically connects to that because previously this uh, tablet was on an airplane that had the GoGo in-flight internet service available. And that, that's the thing is, you know, to have that kind of open Wi-Fi to where you can let clients connect, even if you do ask them to pay for the service later, it has to be open, or else how would they connect, you know? And I guess you could, like, you know, go on the intercom and be like, greetings all airport customers, the WPA password is EEF5204D6A. Like, come on, no, that's not gonna happen. All right, so continuing with the, uh, taking a look here, uh, we've seen the DHCP log over here. My ARP log actually shows the IP addresses of those connected clients. The association log shows what access points they think they're connected to. I'm seeing a lot of ATT Wi-Fi because that's what the coffee shop over there is providing. And this is a fun one, URL snarfer. Uh, great tool, DSNF. Go ahead, just add that in to this because you know it's one of the tools you would just automatically use anyway. So to make things easy, I'm just going to go ahead and pull up my phone and browse to let's say example.com, which is a great domain. So my phone's browsing to example.com. You see, it's forwarding to iana.org, and then over here in the URL snuffer. It's just going to go ahead and all of this updates on a couple of seconds interval. There we go, example.com. And now I can see that's where that client has gone on to. Now, to make it even more fun, remember, uh, what was it, a couple months back, Paul and I went down to UC Berkeley and we had fun with Pineapple Mark II doing a little bit of fishing. And it's amazing how, uh, it's just, it's, it's actually really saddening how effective that is considering how easy it is. It almost feels like cheating. But uh, I mean, if it's that easy, why not? So what we've done is we've added in D, uh, DSNF, or uh, part of the DSNF tools uh, DNS spoof allows us to say, oh, if you're going to this domain, actually give it this IP. So you can see DNS spoof here is currently disabled, but if I click edit over here, ooh. there we go, we have a giant list of the uh, domains and IP addresses, and all of that forwards to our landing page down here, and you see that just goes to redirect.php, and then we do all our fun stuff, and you know, reference that previous episode on how we uh, did a little bit of spoofing there, but it's just a matter of coming over here, clicking start. Entropy Bunny starts it up, Bob's your uncle. Same thing with the ngrep tool. Ngrep is really cool. We've talked about ngrep before in like season five and how you can use it to do like deep packet inspection and filtering just like you would with grep except on the network. So if I click edit on that, we can see here are the different options. I've got one in here to capture cookies. This is great for sidejacking attacks where I'm like, great, I got your Facebook cookie. Now I plug that into my browser, which, you know, there's a great Firefox plugin for editing your cookies. And then, uh, you know, it's just a couple of fields, refresh the page, you're logged in as them. It's like sidejacking, woohoo. Um, and then, you know, because I did this, uh, this interview with um, CBS recently, they wanted me to demonstrate some of the like really nefarious stuff. So, you know, here's, and this is like, just looking for anything that looks like a social security number. Same thing with here with a credit card. Obviously, I'm not promoting anything uh, nefarious like that, but just to kind of give you an idea of like, yes, if it's in plain text and it's going over the wire, well, you're an idiot. Don't do that. And uh, this is demonstrating that because it's like just pulling in clients who think they're connected to their corporate wireless or whatever it may be. But again, the idea with this interface being super simple to, you know, make changes to those, you just, you know, update your ngrep and then click, you know, update ngrep. Same thing here with your DNS spoof. Same thing here with, you know, all of the different configuration files. So, you know, to, to start that, it's just a matter of clicking start. And continuing along with the whole idea that it's like your consumer router meets hacker meets bulletin board system from the 80s, under the advanced tab here, uh, we actually see our kernel IP routing table. This is what's enabling internet connection sharing. And we can just go ahead and add routes right in here. If, say, we're troubleshooting and when we, we want to ping, say, uh, we want to ping google.com, just come over here and it just pings the host just like you would expect to find on the troubleshooting section of your home router. The idea being try to make it as easy as possible. There we go, there's our results. Things, same thing with trace route. 
Clearing the pineapple cache, this is for, say, you've got a battery powered, you, you unplug it before you stop the services, you still got stuff in your log files, well, you can just go ahead and clear the cache, so you're not looking at ghost data from a previous session. Uh, same thing with factory reset, if you really bork it, there's backup of all the config files, their ability to reboot it, um, and then this is my favorite thing. This is the last feature creep thing I added, was just the ability to execute any arbitrary command. So I can do ls tac la slash www and cat slash etc config wireless and any command you want, one per line, execute commands, it refreshes, gives you the results. The beautiful thing in this is Wi-Fi pineapple.com now have the ability to go ahead and like update it and uh, you know add features because I'm not done playing with this, but I hope you guys have fun playing with this. Of course, all of this is just built on PHP. And uh, so like any web server, I'm using UHTTP built into here, or nano HTTP, whatever you want to call it, uh, or micro, I guess. And the, um, yeah, pretty much PHP and a couple of script files and tools that are built into OpenWRT, some of our favorite man-in-the-middle tools. A lot of these are actually still available for Kamikaze. Uh, this is running a bleeding edge version, but uh, you know the, the previous versions might be able to get you know some of these packages moved over in the, the clean interface. And then finally, last part of the tour, the about page, where we pretty much give pops and say, you know, please hack responsibly. Um, other than that, uh, Actually, honestly, all of this hacking has worked up an appetite. I think we should talk about kind of the future of this and where we're going, but uh, first I think I might need some schnitzel. This is so good. Dude, this is what I'm talking about. Why go to the coffee shop when you could stay here and hack at the Baltic in Point Richmond? Get yourself some Wiener Schnitzel and some bratwurst and all the good yummy stuff. Gigantic beers, pineapples. So what I was thinking was, I just kind of like let you guys know that I'm really stoked about the project. I've spent the last like month and a half working on the code for it. I think I mentioned something in the block about some of the weird stuff I found with like NoHop and you know piping stuff to at. So I'll have the source code out. Wi-FiPineapple.com is the place to find all the stuff. I'm updating it with um, a whole bunch of different like, like tutorials and guides and things of that nature. And uh, I'm really stoked about like the idea of since we've moved basically essentially where the clients connect on the machine to you know say taking um, like a rig like this and a second pineapple and kind of like piggybacking them together, you know, one connect to the internet and the other one uh, provide the, the Yazaga to everybody else. And, you know, because I actually tried to create a virtual access point, it turns out while you can basically create another AP in here with like Airmon NG and stuff, it's only going to go into monitor mode, not master mode. So unfortunately, the radio is actually UNO radio, or EINS radio, I guess we would say here in, in uh, the Baltic. But uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the direction of the pineapple. I'm really stoked to see what you guys think about this project because it's something that we've been passionate about on the show here for such a long time. And again, it kind of goes with the whole theme of what we love is things that take advantage of those inherent trusts that you know the machine has in the network or in the human or whatever it may be. So uh, definitely leave us your feedback. Go and get involved in uh, the forums. We've got a Yazaga forum all set up. I can't say thank you enough to Rob and Sebastian Movix, everybody for uh, getting involved in the project. And of course, the Baltic for, uh, for the German food and, and Das Boot. So uh, yeah, anyway, with all of that said, uh, Sloan Chair, or uh, how does it go? <laughs> what is it again? Prost. 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 <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Ah. Oh, you know what? Paul, I just remembered, since this is based on attitude adjustment, OpenWRT, whenever you log in via SSH, it's got a cocktail, we're in a bar. 
and it looks like you're about to have a quarter ounce of vodka, gin, amaretto, triple sec, oh god, peach schnapps, sour mix, cranberry juice. Paul, you are having this. You are. You are, Paul. 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 I'm not doing another podcast until you drink one of these. <laughs> yes! All right, we'll have one of these sick cocktails. Awesome. Two glasses. That's no good. <laughs> Always good. Dude, this thing is like Kool Aid. All right, here we go. Oh, sorry. Here we go. All right. Oh, we can do one of these, Paul. Alrighty. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking at my lips. Don't look at the lips. Don't look at the lips. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. No, the, the drink. Yeah, ready? And go. Oh, that's an attitude adjustment. Not bad. Pull once more. <laughs>